What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here, welcome back to another PS4 tutorial. So in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys how to get PS4 remote play working on 5.05 .05 and how to get keyboard and mouse support working for your PS4 games over remote play so you can actually use your keyboard and mouse to play your PS4 games. Kind of two different things in this video but they're both uh, related to remote play obviously so I thought I would just combine them into this one video here. So. First things first, uh, PS4 Remote Play. I did do a video on this last year, but it's kind of outdated now because it no longer works. Yeah, so if you try and use the PS4 Remote Play app on 5.05 .05 now, it just gives you an error message saying you have to update your firmware version in order to use Remote Play. So that's no good. And if you install the older version of the app that used to work on 5.05, .05, it just forces you to update to the latest version before you can use the app. So yeah, not great. So. I feel like it's time I kind of updated that video, especially since I've had quite a few requests. Plus, we've just recently had this new app that's released that allows you to use keyboard and mouse to play your PS4 games over remote play. And, you know, there's been lots of other kind of solutions for using keyboard and mouse on PS4. There's hardware tools that you can get, but obviously that costs money. There's software, but normally, again, that costs money. Um, and, you know, certain software normally requires you to actually have a PS4 controller connected to your computer um, to actually, you know, pass the keyboard and mouse inputs through. Whereas this app is completely free and it emulates a PS4 controller, so you don't even need a PS4 controller to pass the inputs through from your keyboard and mouse because it emulates it for you. So, yeah, it's pretty awesome. So, but first we got a quick word from our sponsor, Ridge.com. Ridge Wallet is a uniquely designed compact wallet with RFID blocking inner plates that can hold up to 12 cards. Plus they come with either a cash strap or a money clip that you can use for your bank notes. So far I've only had mine for a few days, but I love how small and compact it is. Gets rid of that awful wallet bulge and trying to get your wallet in and out of tight pockets. So it's definitely a keeper for me. Plus it comes with a lifetime warranty and in the unlikely event that you don't like it, there are free returns. They have many different designs. The one I have here is the black aluminium design. And if the wallet's not to your taste, they have many other great products like rucksacks, phone cases, and more. And if you use the link ridge.com forward slash modded and enter the code modded at the checkout, you can save yourself 10% off your purchase. So click the link in the pinned comments underneath this video. It helps support the channel and you get a great product in the process. So thanks to Ridge Wallet for sponsoring this video. So you, the only way to use remote play as far as I'm aware on 5.05 .05 is to be on the same network. So the PS4 and the device that's connecting to the PS4 over remote play, they have to be on the same local network because you know doing it over the internet is only possible, I think, if you're actually on PSN because it has to use PSN in order to do that. So obviously you can't connect to PSN on 5.05, .05, so it's not gonna work over the internet, but it will work over your LAN connection. So first thing we're going to do is head over to settings and the first problem that you'll run into is if you try and run the remote play connection settings on 5.05 .05, it will not let you even enter that uh, sub menu because you have to be signed into PlayStation Network in order to use it. So the way to get around that is to head on to your WebKit exploit. So if you go to 165.227.82 dot 83.145 that'll take you to Alizov's exploit host and then if you go to ps4 and then select ren which is remote enabler so that enables the remote play connection settings so if you just run that and wait for it to hopefully succeed there we go remote play enabled so what you'll notice is this kind of screws up the browser so if you try and press the middle button it won't exit um, it also stops it basically stops the PS button from working on your controller for some reason. But uh, what you need to do then is press the options button and go down to close window and then just press circle to exit out. Then if we head to settings and we go down to remote play uh, connection settings, we can now access the sub menu. And from there, we're gonna enable remote play. So moving over to the device that we want to connect to the PS4 from, in my case, it's the computer. So we can't use the latest version of PS4 Remote Play. So one quick easy way to get Remote Play working is to use the open source alternative. So if we head over to uh, this page here on GitHub, there is an open source version of PS4 Remote Play that you can download. So if we just head to the releases and then download the latest version. So for me, it's the Windows version. 
Plus, the good thing about this is that it supports a lot of different platforms. So there's an Android version, there's a Linux version, a Mac OS version. So if you're having, you know, trouble trying to use any of Sony's official uh, remote play clients for Android or something like that, or you're on Linux, for instance, where I don't think the official client actually works for Linux, then you can use this open source one instead. So if we just download the Windows version, which I have downloaded here, if we open this up, you can see we've got all of these uh, raw files and folders. So if we just copy them into a folder, I'm just going to call it remote play client and we'll go ahead and copy them all in there. And then once we have them copied over, we can enter that folder and run the executable. Okay, so when you open it, your PS4 might automatically get detected. Maybe not, it depends. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. Using this little automatic detection here, it will just search the network for your PS4. As you can see, it's found mine. If it doesn't find yours straight away, then you can click the little plus button, enter the IP address of your PS4 in here and click save, and then it should add it manually. And then once it's added, you can double click and then it will ask you to register the console. So in this case, you're going to select the top option for PSN online ID for PS4s that are on firmwares under 7.0, which we are. We're on 5.05. So then it's going to ask for the online ID, which is um, just the username of your PS4 account. So mine is modded underscore warfare. So just go ahead and enter the username of your account. It doesn't have to be an actual PSN ID. We're only connecting to the console over uh, our local connection. So you don't have to worry about that. Then enter the pin number. So to get the pin number, if you just on the PS4, go down to the add device option, select that option and you'll get a pin number there. And you want to just enter that pin number into this box. So 54577318. And then click register and that should be it so successfully registered i click ok and now all i have to do is double click it and remote play starts running so i can now use my keyboard on my computer to use remote play here on the ps4 and you know it's pretty impressive it runs just as well as the official app maybe even better than the official app from Sony. Also, if you're on Android, just to show you how it works on Android, it's the same thing. You can download the app from the Google Play Store and once you install it, you can run it. And then again, it has the same automatic detection on the network. So it might automatically detect the PS4. If not, you click the little plus button to register it manually, enter the IP address, enter the username of your PS4, making sure you're selecting the below 7.0 firmware option and then enter the pin number and you can connect and as you can see it works fine on android as well so that is the open source alternative that you can use however at this time the keyboard and mouse adapter does not work with the open source client so you cannot use the keyboard and mouse as a controller to actually play your ps4 games over remote play using the open source app. Hopefully that will be added in future. Maybe the open source, maybe the developers of the open source app will implement a keyboard and mouse feature so that you can do it. Or maybe the developer of the actual keyboard and mouse adapter for the official Sony remote play client might, you know, incorporate the adapter to work with the open source client as well. Who knows, hopefully something like that will happen because it would be great if the functionality was built in here. But if not, um, there is a way to get remote play on 5.05 working with the official app as well, but this is only for uh, Windows. So, you know, if you're not on Windows, if you're on Linux, Mac OS, or you're on, um, particularly if you're on, you know, Android or something like that, use the open source client. But if you're only doing this for the keyboard and mouse feature, then you're going to have to use this workaround to get the official client working. So, Basically, what you want to do is head over to this website here, which I'll link in the description, which is a guide to enable PS4 remote play on firmware 5.05 and download the two uh, programs here. So you've got the remote play installer, which is just an older version of the remote play app, which works on 5.05. And also there's a PS4 remote play patcher. So download that one as well. 
So once you've got them downloaded, we're going to run the PS4 Remote Play, the older version, and extract it over to our desktop. And then just run the installer. Just go through the usual installer. But once it's installed, do not run it yet. Because if you run it, it will try and do the automatic update to the latest version, which is not what we want. So once you have it installed, we're then going to run the PS4 Remote Play Patcher. So we're going to create a folder and just extract the files into that folder. And then run the patcher as administrator. So right click on it and run it as administrator. And then just click the button, say yes. And there we go, it's patched successfully. So now when you run PS4 Remote Play, it should not give you the update. As you can see there, no update. It just ran perfectly, no problem. And then you can click start. So we go to add device. Okay, so my pin number's changed. So if it's not finding it when it's searching, just click register manually and then enter the pin number 80014600 and register. And there we go. We now have the official remote play client also working on 5.05 right here. For some reason, the quality is much worse. Oh, that's probably the settings. It's probably set to a lower resolution. So... Anyway, what we're going to do now is try and get the keyboard and mouse adapter working. So for that, you head to this GitHub page by uh, Star Shinata. I believe that's his name. So he made the keyboard and mouse adapter for the official client. So just click the button to download here. That will download the latest version. And then, as you can see, I have it downloaded right here. It's just a setup.exe. So run it. Click run and let it do its thing. Okay, it'll restart remote play. Okay, so once it opens up, it should automatically launch remote play as well. So first thing we're gonna do is go to settings and I'd recommend maybe lowering the resolution to like 360p because the only reason we're using this remote play is to be able to use the keyboard and mouse. So we're not really interested in, you know, viewing the video feed from the remote play app because what we want is mainly just for the inputs of our keyboard and mouse to be passed through remote remote play and if we select a really high quality like 1080p then what's going to happen is you know we're probably going to consume a lot of bandwidth for the video feed and that means that you know we might get more kind of lag and issues when it's trying to transmit the keyboard and mouse inputs. We want there to be as much headroom as possible with the bandwidth. So I would select a really low resolution and, um, you know, standard frame rate. And that should be that. So then we click OK. We click Start. We'll go ahead and... Uh, uh, oh, never mind. It's detected the PS4. There we go. OK, so now, hopefully... Yeah, so backspace no longer goes back, which shows that it is working because according to this, um, back the back button is circle, which is C. So if I press C on the keyboard, that does indeed work. And I can now use uh, A and D to scroll left and right. So I already have Call of Duty Black Ops 3 running. So uh, X is V. So go ahead and select V on there, V. And that should be that. I think it's E and J to go R1 and R2. Okay, there we go. So, okay, so V to select controls. So for Black Ops 3, I'm just going to keep it on high or maybe I'll go up to 9 on the look sensitivity and turn off, uh, you know, target assist and aim assist so that we can get a proper kind of keyboard and mouse experience here. Okay, so the first thing you'll notice here is that um, the mouse is not going to work. So the keyboard's working. So I can use, you know, W to go forward and hold down shift to run. So in order to get the mouse to work properly, you just select this bar at the top to hide mouse cursor in remote play. And then when you click back onto the remote play box, it should now work. So now when I'm scrolling around, you can see it is working. So what I would do is just switch and obviously don't use the crappy 360p quality um, remote play feed to play. Just switch to your actual HDMI input on your system and then you can use the keyboard and mouse inputs. 
and it works pretty well. It's not perfect. You know, it's definitely not perfect. There's a lot of things that need to be fixed. Also, I would minimize this so that you don't accidentally click it because sometimes the mouse goes outside of the remote play box, uh, which is not right. I'm not sure why that's happening. Might be a glitch. But then if you click back into remote play again, you can see that it is now working. But what I'm talking about is if you look at my computer, you can see as I'm scrolling around in game with the mouse, you can see the mouse is also going outside of the remote play box and also like could potentially click on stuff on my desktop, which is obviously not good. So not quite sure what's causing that. But the mouse is working in game, as you can see. Oh, there we go. We've got full screen, so hopefully it won't do that as often now. But yeah, I can use shift to sprint. I can use the mouse to scroll around. So it's not really that great at this point, at least not from my experience, because um, it's a bit oversensitive. It kind of overdoes it when you scroll to the right sometimes. Uh, it goes further right than you actually like meant to scroll with the mouse. So there's a few bugs here and there that still need to be ironed out, but the developer does appear to be updating the app fairly often. So hopefully he'll get those bugs ironed out and it'll be, you know, a better experience. Um, plus, currently there's no button mapping for the, the mouse yet, only the keyboard. So there's still a few things that need to go. And also, if you're wanting to bind a button, it's as simple as selecting the button you want to bind. I mean, I don't know why X is selected on V. X is normally the jump button in most games, uh, like first person games. So I'm going to change that to space because obviously I want to use the space bar to jump. And as you can see, that is now working in game. Hopefully he can implement some kind of like preset option where you can, you know, select different presets depending on which game you're playing. So that if you're playing Black Ops 3, then you can load a preset that has all your button binds for Black Ops 3. And then if you go into a different game, you can load a different set of preset binds for uh, that game as well. Uh, so that would be useful. But so far, um, it's looking pretty good. So yeah, that's it. That is how you get PS4 Remote Play working on 5.05 .05 and how to play your PS4 games using a keyboard and mouse. So hope you guys enjoyed the video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.